Hello, my name's Mark and I am Chico Cheetah. So in this series of programming our Bush machine here with Practical Machinist, we're going to take a look at programming a boring bar sequence. Okay, so let's dive right into how we're going to program this boring bar sequence with G-code. So we're gonna start off with N5. As before, I use the N numbers as search functions so we can quickly skip through parts of the program. Now I follow that up with an operator's note saying the details about what tool we are using. Now more details about this tool would be in the header section. In the header section, I would list what grade of tips and the name of and type of the tool that we are using. So just for reference, I've added here a 10 millimeter boring bar, just so we know what to expect when that turret changes position and the tool comes down to the center line. So we spoke about the safety line before, so I'm not gonna go into this in too much detail. Have a look back at the other videos in the series for more information about how and why I program my safety line in this way. So I've used N5 as our search number. And the reason I used N5 is because we are using tool five. I like to keep the two the same, so if we know we're bringing in tool five, we can search for N5 and it brings our program down to this section. So T0505 calls a tool in position number five and references the offset and tool data in position five in our data table. And MA6 does our tool change. So I'm setting the spindle speed here. Now this material is unknown, so the speeds and feeds are arbitrary figures. They're not exact for whatever material we are using. So we're using S2200 RPM here. So we set our RPM with an S value and MO3 turns the spindle on in a clockwise direction. Now if our tools are mounted backwards, we might use MO4 here. So our first move is we're gonna wrap it into a safe position in front of the part. So I'm using G00, our rapid travel command, and I'm wrapping it down to X17 millimeters and Z5 millimeters off the face of the part. Now we're assuming our datum position, our work shift datum is set at zero at the front of the part. So this brings our tool five millimeters clear from that material. So our bore here is 16 millimeters that we're gonna cut and I've come in at 17 millimeters. There's a reason for that and I'll explain in a minute. So our next move is we're gonna switch over to a feed rate move using G01. Now I'm bringing our Z close to the face of the work here, moving right into only 0.3 of a millimeter. I'm using the feed rate of 0.5 and I'm turning my coolant on at this point. So now our Z position is very close to the front. So I could have wrapped it to this position, but because we're coming so close, I like to do this on a feed move. So I have more control over that feed dial on the machine. So I can slow it down and watch it come in to make sure the tool is set correctly. It saves on crashes. So the reason I wrapped it to X17 and not X16 is because I want to turn a small chamfer just to burr on the front of this bore. Now this often confuses people and catches people out. So what we're doing here is we're coming down to X16 Z minus 0.2. So that Z minus 0.2 is cutting a 0.245 degree chamfer right at the beginning of the bore just to be burr. So the way the 45 degree chamfer works can often get confusing. So what we're doing here is we're moving exactly one millimeter in X, but half a millimeter in Z. Now this is because when we move an X on a CNC lathe, we are moving in diameters. So if we take two millimeter cut in the diameter, the tool is actually only moving one millimeter to move that cut. So because of that, we have to move half in Z what we do in X. So our X is one millimeter, but our Z is only half a millimeter complete travel there. Now, only 0.2 of that is cutting because that 45 degree starts cutting in air beforehand. So if we want to change the depth of this 45 degree chamfer, we have to move both Z depths together. So if we started at Z 0.1, for example, and finished at Z minus 0.4, that would give us a 0.4 chamfer. So the distance between the Zs is always half the distance between the X that we move to produce a 45 degree chamfer. So because G01 is still active, we're moving to the end point of our chamfer and I've changed the feed rate to 0.07. So we can slow that down a little bit so we can uh, get a good finish on this bore. So once we've machined our chamfer, I now want to take our finishing cut across the surface of that bore. So Z minus 21 mil would take us to the full depth of the bush, which is 20 mil, 
plus one millimeter clearance at the other side. Now, if you wanted to here, you could come in with a grooving tool and put an internal groove at the back and then put a chamfer at the back also. If you're not using a second op collet or, or you're not using a dual spindle machine, we can add a back chamfer here by using that technique. So I would recommend going in with a grooving tool first and then that gives the clearance for that boring bar to go in and remove the material at the back if you want to do a back chamfer or a rear deep burr to part off nice and clean on that ball. So once we've gone to the full depth of that ball, I now want to relieve an X. We're gonna come down a little bit towards the center line so we don't scratch that ball when we remove our boring bar from inside the component. So switching over to G00 now, we can wrap it our tool out to a safe record distance away from the front face of our bush. So I'm coming back to five millimeters again here. So we've got five millimeters clearance away from that front face. So once our tool is clear of the part, we can then send it home. So I'm calling upon our machine datum here and not our work shift datum. So G53 is our machine datum, X0, Z0, we'll send it back to its home position and MO9 turns off the coolant. MO5 stops the spindle and MO1 is our optional stop. So if we wish, we can stop the machine here to check that bore is desired with the correct plug gauge. So that's how I program a finished bore sequence by using point to point programming. Now we could use cycles here if there's more material that we need to remove, but I normally keep that for the roughing sequence. And then when it comes to the finishing sequence, I like to do point to point like I've done here. So if you're enjoying this series and you want to know more about how to program CNC lathes, pop over to my website at gcotutor.com where I have a course on programming CNC lathes, CNC milling machines, and also advanced macro programming by using G-Code.